Workshop 1 is going to be all about identifying different types of cells and the sorts of experiments that we can do to do that, and also introduce you to some microscopy techniques that are essential for understanding cell biology. So you may have come across these techniques before, but we're going to explore them in a little bit more detail. So the first technique that we're going to look at is light microscopy. So this is a standard uh, sort of microscope that you might have used before. Um, and here on the left hand side, we've got a picture of some algae uh, with the algae are static and these moving things on the image are uh, the spores of those algae. So their spores can actually move around, but the algae themselves can't. And the way that the light microscope works is we have a light source, we have a light source which then goes through a condenser. So it focuses the light on our specimen. Uh, after that, the light uh, goes through a series of lenses to get to the eyepiece. And then if we focus it correctly, then we form an image. So you'll probably have used these sorts of microscopes before uh, and you can get really nice uh, pictures from them. But light microscopy has a bit of a disadvantage just in the way that we set it up uh, as standard. Uh, so the standard settings for light microscopy are called bright field microscopy. So just a standard microscope set up like that, it's called bright field. And that's great for looking at naturally pigmented cells. So if your cells have already got something that's coloured in there, so it might be chlorophyll, uh, that appears green, or it might be another pigment, then you can get really nice images on bright field microscopy. However, most cells don't actually contain any natural pigment. So here we've got some human cheek cells, um, and there isn't anything pigmented in there. So if we put those under a standard microscope, then we can't really see that uh, very clearly. Um, so that's a bit of a limitation. But there are different things that we can do in order to uh, make cells more visible. So one of the strategies is to uh, stain the cells with particular dyes. So here we've got, this is a blood smear. So here we've got red blood cells and here we've got white blood cells of different types. And those cells have been stained with a particular dye that sends them a particular colour. So that's great for seeing the difference between things. But in order to do that, you have to kill the cells. So you have to do what's called fixing. So that basically means you're killing the cells and you're uh, keeping them in a particular orientation. So uh, it's really great for being able to see things, but you can't do any live cell imaging with this sort of microscopy. The other alternative is to set your microscope up in a bit of a different way called phase contrast microscopy. So this basically, there's some optical tricks that mean that you can get better contrast uh, in your image. So here we've got those same cells as over here, but under phase contrast. And you can see um, that we can see more detail uh, this way. And if you're wondering uh, whether my, uh, an image is not phase contrast or not, this kind of halo effect around the outside, that's a dead giveaway that you're looking at a phase contrast image. So you can do live cell imaging in phase contrast, but you'll always get a black and white image, or you can have a nice colorful image, but you can only work with dead cells. So you've got to choose which type of microscopy is appropriate for what you want to look at. OK, so that's light microscopy. A more advanced type of microscopy is fluorescence microscopy. So here we've got a fluorescence microscope at the top. It looks roughly like the sorts of microscopes that you've used before. But on the side, we've got fluorescent lamps or even laser generators uh, that are supplying our light source. Okay. So on the left hand side, we can see some really nice fluorescence imaging um, of some cells dividing. So here we go. Now we've got the mitotic spindle forming and then it's just about to go. Uh, those chromosomes will start to separate off. So we can do live cell imaging. There they go. So we've got the microtubules are labeled and the DNA is labeled. Uh, so we can do live cell imaging. And the way that these uh, work is that you have your light source coming in. And then what we do is to separate it off into particular colors. So we have a, what's called a beam splitting mirror. So only um, light of a particular frequency goes down onto your sample. Then the light bounces back off that sample. Again, it goes through a mirror and then it goes up to an eyepiece. Or if you're using laser beams, then it might go um, to a digital detector because you obviously don't want to be looking at lasers directly down your microscope. So you can get these beautiful um, time lapses of living cells, which are really, really nice. 
But if we need to, if we're looking at fluorescence, then we need to think about well, what the source of fluorescence might be. And there are four main sources of fluorescence that we use. So here we've got on the left hand side, we've got some stomatal guard cells uh, from a plant surrounding the stomatal pore. And on the right hand side, we've got another image of cell division. So you can see the mitotic spindles here. So what sources of fluorescence can we use? Well, one of the sources we can use is natural fluorescence. So chlorophyll is not only naturally pigmented, uh, but it's also naturally fluorescent. So uh, they, they, these here are chloroplasts and they're naturally fluorescent. This can actually be a bit annoying if you're trying to do fluorescence microscopy in plants. You can also have green fluorescent proteins. So we'll talk more about this in lecture three, but what you can do with this fluorescent protein is to link it to a particular cellular protein. So here we've got uh, a protein uh, that's linked to GFP on the left hand side that's uh, associated with membranes. So you can see it going around the nucleus in the middle there. And on the right hand side, we've got something that's associated with the outside cell, uh, outside of the cell has been associated with the green fluorescent protein. So that's a really nice technique if you want to look at specific proteins. You can also have fluorescent dyes. So for example, there's a dye called DAPI, which stains DNA and it, they fluoresce blue um, on a confocal microscope. Um, so that can be a nice technique. Uh, there are dyes for DNA, there are dyes for actin. So some of those are the major components of the cell we can see that way. Or something we can do is to uh, get antibodies. So the same sorts of proteins that elicit an immune response. Uh, we can label those with something fluorescent and they will then stick to a particular protein uh, inside our cells. So there's four different ways that we can make things fluorescent to then do uh, some really nice detailed imaging. The last uh, type of uh, microscopy is electron microscopy. So here on the right is an electron microscope. These are very expensive pieces of kit and work quite differently to uh, the sorts of microscopes you've used before. And the basic strategy with an electron microscope is that rather than you've got light going around, you've got beams of electrons. OK, so here uh, the electrons are coming in from the top. They again through go through some sort of condenser to focus the electrons on your specimen. Then uh, they go through a series of different lenses uh, made with electromagnets. And then uh, there'll be either be a viewing screen or a photographic film at the end to detect the electrons. And uh, what we can do with that is to get these really beautiful sections of cells. So sectioning is when you cut a cell into, up into very, very thin layers. So here I've got a nice uh, cell section. So here's a uh, cell. Uh, I've got the nucleus, which looks like it's probably uh, in a slightly funny shape because it looks like there's two bits of it. It's probably just the way it's been cut in half. We can see uh, we've got mitochondria in there. And we've got various different organelles. So we get these incredibly detailed views of the cell with an electron microscope. We can also use scanning electron microscopy. Uh, so that gives uses this is the same per basic principle, but rather than going through your sample, it bounces off. So you get these amazing three dimensional images. So on the left hand side, this is the eye of a it's compound eye of a Drosophila fly. So you can see these individual uh, light focusing cells and then these little hairs in between. So there's the compound eye of a Drosophila. On the right hand side, we've got some pollen grains from just daisy plants. So there's some pollen. Uh, so we can get really nice, beautiful uh, three dimensional images. But electron microscope images are always in black and white. So they're either uh, black and white in this section way or they're black and white in this three dimensional way. So that's how you can tell you're looking at an electron microscope image.